Kako Apao. This is uh, Kaiwa Pua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation, bringing you another segment of Voices of Truth, one on one with Hawaii's future. Uh, today we're out on uh, Pokai Bay, actually, and we're with uh, Robert Ibanez. Robert, aloha. Aloha. Mahalo for being with us, Robert. Thank we're, you. Uh, very pleased that you could join us. It's a beautiful sunny day out here. It is. Uh, we've been out in po uh, Pokai Bay last time. Everything was just bright green, you know, was, uh, several months ago, but it was so much rain that it was uh, quite green all the way around here. And uh, today is, uh, of course, another beautiful day. Uh, I guess what we're going to be looking for from you is your, your kind of uh, your journey uh, regarding discovering who you are and where you came from, Great. right? Great. And uh, so we've spent a little time, uh, I know we talked before a little bit about when you got into actually uh, learning about your, your history and your kupuna and your, yes. and your genealogy. And I was surprised to hear you say that, uh, what, how old were you when you started, when you were interested, when you got interested? About uh, 19 years old, 18, 19 years old, yeah. right out of high school. Yeah. yeah. And to me, that was, uh, that was pretty surprising because, um, I mean, I, I got hooked on the genealogy and the, and the ancestors myself, and I know a lot of other people who have too, but it was generally much later in life. I mean, it was oh. quite, quite unusual, I think, for people at 18 or 19 years of age, you know, to, uh, to really get hooked on this because it's, uh, it's quite a responsibility. And it it's, is. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that actually more of us should do earlier on because we would discover who we are and why we do the things the way we do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, early on, but uh, yeah. Uh, tell us where, well, where did you, where did you uh, originate? Where do you come from? I was born and raised on the Big Island of Hawaii mm -hmm. in a town called Pahala uh -huh. in the district of Kau. Right. And uh, I grew up, I graduated in 1975, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And uh, my kupuna, my mother, we were related to Auntie America Vena Pukui, mm -hmm. who is a uh, well-known historian and uh, sure. you know, yeah. genealogist and so on. Yeah. So coming that's why coming of age in Kau yeah. and many, many other products. Yeah, coming from Kau, I had no clue that who I was, yeah. basically. Yeah. That I was more interested in surfing, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, at, at the young age, who, who shouldn't be? You know, that's you what sure. you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. That was my beginning of the journey when I met uh, Kavena at her home in Manoa when she was staying with her daughter. Uh, Antipath bacon. Well, how did, how did that come about? Uh, how did your, your oh. getting together with her come about? I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, you were living in, in Kau yeah. and I you was, come all the way to Oahu. You had you know, to, I was a Kolohe boy, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, uh, like most kids. And uh, my senior year, uh, I joined a class, an elective class yeah. called Lao Lima. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was um, Mrs. Lau, and um, you know that class was basically going out to the community and talking to the kupunas and find mm -hmm. out about the information back then. It can be anything. So like my oral history, kind yeah, oral history, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then write about it, and then we put it in and we publish it right. in, in in high school. So that's so what this was before everyone had a camera and everyone had video. Uh, so, uh, well, we had cameras, but we never had CDs and, yeah. and vi videos and stuff like that. Right. So we just had cameras and the um, uh, our regular tape, you know, the, the audio tape. Recorder, tape. Audio tape. Uh, okay, so you do an audio interview and Just an audio view and we take pictures and of the kupuna. It, I guess, huh? And we go back and transcribe it. Yeah. And then we edit it mm -hmm. and, um, and we get graded for that. Okay. So and this was at what grade were you in? My senior year senior. in Kau High School. Senior, yeah. Yeah, in 1975. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Lara is such a beautiful lady, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, she's a Haole lady, mm -hmm. married Filipino. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it doesn't matter because, you know, we all were like Ohana. Sure. You know, we never looked at, you know, 
fortunately at that time in Kau. Mm -hmm. Well, a good know. teacher is a good teacher. Yeah, a good a teacher. A good person is a good exactly, person. Exactly. You know, sure. I feel the same way. So that's what triggered it. And when I came up here to Honolulu to attend Kapilani Community College, mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Laura asked me a favor if I could interview my aunt, uh -huh. uh, Kavena Bukui. I said, yeah, no problem, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what started my whole journey. So she knew about uh, your yeah, relationship, relationship, probably because of yeah. when you were in and, her class. And, and even at that time, I really didn't know what auntie really did. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I just knew uh -huh. she was auntie because my mom was devoted to her. Yeah. Because their mothers were, were sisters. Yeah. And so they were, that, that was her first cousin. Right. And mom was born in 1918. Right. And Kavena was born in 1895. So she was a lot older a cousin. Older, yeah. But she looked up to her, you know, mm -hmm. as she, I guess, started writing mm -hmm. more uh, Olelo mm -hmm. and more writings from the Kapunas. Mm -hmm. And what uh, Kavena was doing was talking to our family and other relatives and neighbors and so on. Mm -hmm. And mom was doing the same thing. Sure. So they were exchanging genealogical information right. of our family in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I'm kind of blessed to have privy to the letters that they've been writing over the years. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, and did you, uh, did, you, did you know of uh, you know, all of the records, uh, the oral in the interviews and so forth that uh, the Bishop Museum, you know, they have a lot of those, and I don't know if you yeah. availed yourself, but there were a lot of recordings. And yeah, rec I had no idea. Yeah. At that time, I didn't know, yeah. that, and only recently, uh, maybe in the last 10, 15 years, I realized right. that she, I knew she worked there, yeah. but I didn't know she had all these recordings there. Oh, that was a major, like a yeah. lifelong pursuit. Lifelong. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Kavena was uh, privy to both sides. Mm -hmm. The Caucasian side, her father's side, mm -hmm. Wigan, mm -hmm. and they, she was taught, you know, those um, nursery rhymes and, and English and so on. Right. But when it came to the grandmother's side, mm -hmm. who was caring for her, she, she only had to speak Hawaiian right. Kauia. So that so was she was another one who had a foot in both worlds. On both worlds, yeah. yeah. So it must have been exciting. And, and I guess she knew that the, the Hawaiian people were were subjected to um, losing their identity, so to speak, because oh, yeah. all the changes, sure. you know, from the time of the Mahele yeah. in 1848 and the overthrow of 1893, mm -hmm. you know, and the tremendous changes occurred, you know, throughout the islands. Well, so, I'm sure, you know, I mean, that to me had to be her one of her greatest motivations because that's yes. what she dedicated her life to. Was, she, she did, you know, recording and and recounting what had happened in the past yeah. and of course that enables us to know where we came from and exactly find out where we are today yeah know, and perhaps we're moving forward into the future and you know she shared with me i want to share with you something that uh, what was kind of troubling to me when she said to me in 1976 or so was that, you know, she, because I asked her, you, you wrote the Hawaiian dictionary, you know, I kind of picked it up, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't speak the language fluently as, as she sure. did. Yeah. She went through a lot of problems. But the, yeah, most people don't even know she had calls from Hawaiians and so on, cursing her and that kind of stuff. Because uh, of... For what? Why? Based well, you know, it's just, you know, showing, you know, that, you know, speaking the language and I don't know what it was because do, that was during her time. Yeah. But she kept it to herself, mm -hmm. and Auntie Pat, you know, uh, validated that. You know, mm -hmm. she she remembered that time that Commander mm -hmm. would come home crying. Yeah. You know, because and she would in in hold that, mm -hmm. and she would instead of get angry, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure she was. Well, she probably she, hurt. Yeah, hurt. Yeah. But she pour more into it, yeah. her passion. More and you dedicated. can see her work that, yeah. you know, yeah. she, from what I understand, she wrote close to 50 books or more, I'm not sure, but yeah. but she she wrote a lot of... Um, well, why don't you, why don't you um, retell your, your first meeting with her, uh, and maybe <laughs> yeah. that'll give her background as to why yeah. maybe some of the Hawaiians were... Yeah, spiritually. You know, kind of had a, had a connection. Problem. I called uh, Kavena. And that was like maybe in the midweek, like Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I called Auntie Kavena. I said, Kavena, this is um, Kaliku's son. Mm -hmm. 
And she knows my mom is Calico. Yeah. Uh, Irene Brown is Irene Calico Brown. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was expecting your call. Mm -hmm. And it didn't dawn on me until I hung up. I, said, I started thinking to myself, how did she know mm -hmm. I was going to call? Mm -hmm. So probably my sister probably told her, but who knows, you know? And uh, when well, we I think, you know, the other side of that is a lot of times I think the, the special people yeah. are always waiting for the next encounter and who's going to be the one to come and they're so they're anticipating exactly right. connections you know and uh and you know my my older sister she played a joke on me so when we got up to Manoa <laughs> yeah um, I didn't know where the house was yeah and I forgot what Kamena looked like you know because I was again I wasn't you know into yeah. uh, my identity I guess you yeah. called it yeah and um we went to Auntie Pat's house Pat Bacon's mm -hmm. house and it's a beautiful home mm -hmm. you know up in Manoa and I started thinking to myself, you know, my, I wonder if she lives over here, you know, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, you know, right, Hawaiian right lady or whatever, yeah. Yeah. you know, we were poor in, um, in Pahala, you know, even yeah. in the plantation home, so right. I was thinking, you sure this is the right house? And yeah. my sister was saying, yeah, yeah, try, That's try right come, I think so, yeah, yeah. right neighborhood. Yeah. So I knocked on the door, and the door opened, and this howly, I mean, white lady, with, and she was 80 years old. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, Auntie. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. I got the wrong house." And she blurted out, "Fluent Hawaiian." Yeah. And I was just stunned. Yeah. You know, I was, yeah. I was only uh, actually I was 17 because October I made 18. Mm -hmm. So I was just stunned. You know. Yeah. Whoa. And she started laughing, <laughs> and my sister was laughing because she knew that was Kavena. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. So she said, "You know, come inside." You know. So I remember walking through the kitchen first from mm -hmm. the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the kitchen was her false teeth. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she was walking in front of me and she said, Oh, no mind me, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I was eating my fish and poi and I saw the poi. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Wow, this is kind of neat. And um, as we went through the living room, there was a man mm -hmm. sitting on the couch with, the, uh, with a uh, suit and a bow tie, mm -hmm. a howly man. Yeah. You know, and he was nine years old at the time, in 1970. Yeah, yeah, nine years old. Yeah. And they were childhood friends. And she would say, oh, this is Uncle Willie. Mm -hmm. But no relationship go like that. Because yeah. she, she knew the relationship. Mm -hmm. But what didn't happen, the, the story was that they, Kanako Oli's uh, hanaied him when he was a small little kid. Because, you know, mm -hmm. cause, you know that back then, you know, the overthrow and everything, they were kind of reluctant to talk to the Howleys yeah. and the plantation situation. <laughs> um, he lived in uh, Wai Waihino, in Nahaleho side, mm -hmm. in Kau. Mm -hmm. So he actually, that day he flew out to visit Kavena. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just told us, my sister and my other sister, that um, Uncle Willie just showed up that day. Mm -hmm. You know, that morning before I showed up. Mm -hmm. And in his dream, he, was, he learned this chant called the Willie Willie chant. Mm -hmm. And she would, he would learn half of the chant, and he was told by the Kapunas in the dream that your other childhood friend had mm -hmm. the other half, mm -hmm. but he didn't know who that was. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for Kavena. Mm -hmm. You know, she uh, was taught the Willy Willy chant, mm -hmm. and she, uh, only half of it, and your childhood friend mm -hmm. has the other half. Uh. And that week, uh, Uncle Willie said he had a dream, and the Kapunas, our Kapuna said, you need to go and see Kavena and talk to the boy. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of mm -hmm. spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he gave us chicken skin over there listening to this story, you know. Yeah, yeah, true. And um, what was amazing, Uncle Willie could speak fluent Hawaiian. Yeah. And he has not a drop of Hawaiian like Kavena. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he, he was mm -hmm. uh, pure Haole mm -hmm. from Kau. So that was a shock for me, you know, mm -hmm. and they were teasing each other. So I had privy to see how they used to speak before in the old days, the riddling. Mm -hmm. They used to tease each other talking about us, mm -hmm. you know, the young mm -hmm. kids over here, they have no clue what they're talking about. Right, right. And they're talking about, I, I know they were talking about Punalu Beach, you know, all the places, the volcano and stuff like that. Right. You know, very poetic, yeah. me, you mm -hmm. know. So that was my journey in that thing. But Uncle Willie Meineke, mm -hmm. that was he. Mm -hmm. sitting over there mm -hmm. and I showed him his picture yeah. this morning yeah. when you know taking back then yeah. and uh, he's a well-known um, 
you know, he's like a historian. Yeah. In fact, I found him on the, there's a report, the, a book written at the turn of the century by Dr. Stokes, mm -hmm. who did research on heiaus. Right. And there was a Willie Meineke, yeah. who was 19 years old back then, yeah. that helped him. Because nobody would talk to a Howley back then, right. especially a doctor, you yeah. know, trying to find out, oh, where's the, you know, what's the history over here? Mm -hmm. What is these rocks? In, in fact, we should, we're right here, but it's here. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, you know. So they felt kind of uncomfortable, yeah. you know, doing that. Well, the thing still carried over, but oh, yeah. it got got to the point that I really wanted you to make about why you said she had had some trouble times in the in the Hawaiian community, yeah. you know, being negative, and and so what a lot of it had to do with was the fact that uh, she wasn't pure Hawaiian, probably for one thing. Yeah, she looked howly, yeah. as you said, right. and so I guess there was attitude about that. Yeah. Another thing I think too is the fact that she was fluent in the language when a lot of Hawaiians at that time couldn't even speak For, Hawaiian because yeah, they'd already yeah. been oppressed and oppressed. washed out of them. Exactly. So, and you know, those are the kind of frustrations that still exist in the community today. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I can I can under appreciate, you know, the what she had to go through. But I, I also know some of the people who worked with her in doing her research and so forth. Uh, Auntie Ellie Williams oh. Williamson used to go around and travel and interview I mean, going way back, you know, when they were first started recording, recording, uh, audio recordings, and uh, all that stuff was up at the, the museum, and and the way that wow. this is all put together, I mean, it's like a, you know, it's a, like a lifelong saga of articulating and recording all the information that uh, came before and makes us who we are today, and you know, the frustrations that the Hawaiian community has with. Uh, Disconnection from the past, disconnection exactly. from Ohana and and lineage, uh, genealogy. Uh, so it's frustrating to some people who probably are taking it out internally on themselves because they don't speak the language, they don't know who they're, yeah. where they come from, where they come you know? from. and it's kind of like they're just kind of floating around, and it's it's frustrating. And that's why I think we have a lot of the problems we do have in the community. Yeah, now. it's a very complex situation yeah. that we. We live in, in Hawaii, Hawaii. Yeah. you know, uh, when I first started out, I started learning more about the history, mm -hmm. uh, the true history, and obviously you get angry, yeah. you know. Well, that's a so, first, you know, it's the first, first thing you get, you know, right? as Hawaii, yeah. oh, you yeah. know, you get yeah. all. And then you got to get over that. You got to get over that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my advice to whoever is doing genealogy now, mm -hmm. and even the young kids now, you know, they, they're learning and they're getting angry too, mm -hmm. but some of them are really akamai. Because oh, I try, I'm yeah. trying to push them. Yeah. In fact, you know, yesterday I spent some time with my uh, nephew. Uh, his name is Kelly Kipi Kanakoole, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and he's going to school at UH mm -hmm. uh, Hilo right. and learning mm -hmm. the stuff. And he too, as we were driving down to uh, town, mm -hmm. just talking story. Right. I want to. I'm always trying to push him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all the Kapunas did. They yeah. want to find out yeah. what's in, what's sticking in this boy's yeah. mind. Yeah. And then you can see the anger too, you know, and then I told him, but you know, uh, what's the solution, you know? Yeah. And he, I can see he's thinking already, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, I like that song, you know, that Pure Aloha mm -hmm. by uh, Southern Rush. Mm -hmm. You know, I told him, yeah, mm -hmm. the answer is Pure Aloha, Pure mm -hmm. Aloha, mm -hmm. which means unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to forgive. And that's part of the whole Oponopono process that Kavena talked about, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. That's for sure. People no. think that, oh, we're going to have Ho'oponopono and all the pilikia in your family yeah. and friends going to go away. You see uh, the community here, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we get all these young kids. Mm -hmm. And we, we do. We, we, hopefully you can, you can see them get excited. Yeah. Not everybody going to get excited about genealogy and stuff. But, no. yeah, but, but, but the ones who are supposed to yeah. will. And you know, exactly. it's not everybody that needs ones. that responsibility. It's, it is, but in the families, there, somebody, somebody in the family has got to carry forward that knowledge. Yeah. You know, and uh, and there are other people who need to do other things. You know, <laughs> we all don't have to be everything to everything. Exactly. You know, yeah. So the needs are met by whoever has the best ability to fulfill them. You know, yeah. so if a, if it's a genealogy, that's one thing. If it's fishing, it's fishing. another. If it's yeah. farming, yeah. it's another. But if everybody finds their kuleana and yeah. and works at it. All the needs are met. You have yeah. a good society, you know, a good community. The Hawaiians and the indigenous people had it made because if you look over here, you go back 400 years, you look around here, you know, mm -hmm. you have like, wow, you know, abundant of food, 
fish, you know, the lois up here, the fresh water coming down. Yeah. So they understood to malama the aina, the ocean, and the people. And the well, the, 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 the concept of Hawaii being a paradise is probably <laughs> about as close as you can, can have because, I mean, you know, the, the resources were here. Uh, even though they're still here, obviously, we're kind of trashing ourselves uh, in our environment, and, and others are too, and that's something that others have to focus their energy yes. on is correcting that. But, uh, yeah, in a little isolated spot like this, where we have the resources to exist, you know, if we don't poison it, uh, our environment and so forth, uh, I mean, it's, it's a perfect place. I would like to go into the schools mm -hmm. and talk to the kids, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, since, uh, you know, I'm retired now and uh, I have the opportunity to, to spend more time right. doing research and so on. Yeah. And spending the, you know, finding out about the olelo you know, to the mana'o of other people. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised, you know, how we get connected, you know, yeah. when we meet each other. Well, I think there's time. probably a good possibility of your uh, being able to uh, work into the schools, uh, especially if you don't need to get paid because, yeah. no. you know, the, with the budget yeah. in the toilet the way it is and uh, oh, is the it? way things are going, <laughs> uh, if you volunteer, which is the sure. way most things get done in Hawaii sure. anyway, is to volunteer, yeah. uh, you just need to line up with the, uh, the appropriate school. Maybe it's a charter yeah. school. I mean, maybe it's sure. uh, an individual student yeah. in one of the public schools. And, and maybe the kids in emergency school can teach me how to speak Hawaiian, you know, because yeah, I'm slow. Sure. And, I'm, yeah. you know, and that yeah. would be exciting, oh, you know, sure. and it's yeah. an exchange of, of information and manao yeah. mm -hmm. between the younger generation. Well, I think uh, as far as the language goes, uh, you know, you probably are know more than you yeah. ever have. Uh, yeah, so you're always exactly. learning. I'm yeah. always learning. And, and it's, be it's a beautiful language. You of know. course. And when, you, and when you're lucky enough to interact with the young people who are really yeah. immersed, immersed. In, in the language, and it's, it's one of the things that really gives us the most positive possible outlook because right. everything's working, you know? And the kids, the next generation, there yeah. are so many of them who are dedicated uh, to, you know, putting the language back into daily uses. Uh, and with when you're doing that, you can't help but revitalize the culture because they go hand in hand. Exactly. You know? It's so true, you know. Um, it, it, we have to look for the source, mm -hmm. what the say. And the mm -hmm. source is in our children, mm -hmm. in our grandchildren, you know, and in the kapunas that, you know, that mm -hmm. we respect. You know, not, you know, just because you're Hawaiian and you're old, that doesn't mean, you know, you can be respected because of the, you know, assimilation with, with the current modern world. You know, a lot of them move to the mainland, work. Mm -hmm you know, like, you know, insurance industry, like sure. I was doing, yeah. they come home and find out they mm -hmm. want to know more. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you have the same, yeah, well, re-entry, re the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, people their age mm -hmm. were, was here fighting all the time. Mm -hmm. And everybody look at, oh, that uncle is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he was telling the truth. Yeah. But he just didn't know how to deliver it. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that, uh, to kind of wind this up, uh, yeah. Your, your early interest, I think, was amazing to me. You know, like I said, 17, oh, 18, 19 years old is amazing yeah. in genealogy. I came to it late, but it be, it's, it, no matter what age, it can become no a compulsion. It yeah. can, can become a compulsion that just totally engrosses. That's what happened to me when I first uh, yeah. got to it. And it was like I was having dreams and, and visits. And exactly. There was so much going on that, that you know, it, sometimes yes. you have to sit down and think about it. Yeah. But uh, the important thing is, is that if... We wrap this thing up, and you and you can emphasize. You had a special situation. You know your relationship with uh, Kamana Pukui mm. was um, yeah. an amazing, amazing resource, and a, and a lucky, lucky relationship. Yeah, sure. uh, people who don't have that, though, still exactly. have the ability to research. Exactly. And the ones who They're, are inclined towards genealogy, yeah. able to. Yeah. And and you know there's the Bishop Museum, there are genealogy Correct. societies, there yes. are different churches that have roles. And, and so they may not have it, get it handed to them. Right. They may have to go look for it, but Great. maybe people like you could help them look it up. Sure, before. you know, they can get a hold of me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a website, but I do, have, I'm on Facebook, you know. Right, sure. You know, I guess three years ago, I wanted to get the message out there, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, the message of what Hawaii Ne was all about and the issues we had. Mm -hmm. And I had to reach a larger audience, and I have, mm -hmm. you know, so, 
is one contribution that I think mm -hmm. that you know can help the younger generation. Because I'm willing to talk to anyone. Cool. You know. Well, that's what it's going to That's the whole concept. You know. Yeah. But just to share that, you know, I've seen some young kids mm -hmm. who are just passionate. Oh, yeah. And I, I just love it. I can see that the fire burning is, you know. And they have technical like, skills. Yes. That can yeah, they do have way down the road. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so, Robert. Thank you. Mahalo Nui yeah. for being with us. Mahalo to all of you out there who are watching. Once again, I'm Kai Opua Five with the Kuwani Foundation with Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, an important component of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Ahui ho. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.